Whenever we start something new, it's going to be scary. There's no getting around it. For me, one of the most difficult things I can remember trying to do is getting the courage to go to the gym and start exercising to better myself. The thought of others seeing me suffering, sweating, and gasping for breath in my 300 plus pound frame made me tremble with fear, so I avoided going. But that just meant I was stuck in a never ending state of being unhappy and being unhealthy. I had to come up with strategies to get over this, and that's exactly what I did. Here's how I got over my exercise insecurity and lost 150 pounds. So welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Brendan, and I'm a Halifax, Nova Scotia-based runner who has lost over 150 pounds through the power of running and habit change. Yeah, I've lost a whole person. On this channel, we explore the strategies and tools to help us become faster runners and become fitter, whatever that means for you personally. It could be to lose weight, it could be to become a faster runner, whatever it means for you. We're gonna talk about it on this channel. And today, we're gonna talk about something that I think is extremely important, and that is getting over exercise insecurity. Without getting over exercise insecurity, I wouldn't have been able to go to the gym, which in turn, maybe become fitter and healthier. So let's talk about how I got over exercise insecurity. So here's what exercise insecurity looked like for me. I would walk into the gym. I used to go to Good Life Fitness. So I'd walk into Good Life Fitness and see a wall of beautiful Greek gods, essentially. Their arms chiseled, you know, they're just super fit. They were on the treadmill. They weren't even out of breath at all. And me, my 300 plus pound frame, I knew that if I were to go on that treadmill, well, I would not look like that. No, no, no. I would be completely out of breath, heaving and hurting and trying to get some breath in my body. I would be sweating so much. And everyone, I think, would just be looking at me and kind of, I'd be the talk of the gym, essentially, is what my mind and would say to me. And typically what that would mean is I would leave the gym, come on home, lay on the couch, only to be more and more depressed because I was staying super unfit. I was staying super unhealthy, all because... I thought someone was thinking bad things about me. I was letting them keep me in that same place. They were controlling the destiny of my health and my happiness in a way, even though they probably wouldn't even care if I was at the gym. They probably wouldn't even notice me. And that leads us on to something very, very important. The spotlight effect is a psychological theory that pretty much says we all have our own personal spotlight shining right down on us, thinking that we are the center of attention in any given situation. But the reality is each person has their own spotlight. So Joe Blow down the street isn't gonna be thinking about you at the gym because Joe Blow also has his own spotlight shining right down on him because he thinks he's the center of attention in the room and he probably thinks that you're judging him and not that he's judging you. So that should be a pretty great realization. We all think that we're the most important thing in any given room, but the reality is everyone's thinking that same thing. So more often than not, no one's gonna be thinking about you and judging you because they also think that there's a spotlight shining right down on them because they think that they're Beyonce walking into the ball. When in reality, we all just kind of think that about ourselves and that's kind of a weird thing to think about, but it's the truth. And that should be a great realization for anyone suffering with any insecurity. People think that they're the most important thing and they're probably not gonna be caring about anything that you do at the gym especially. If anything, they'll probably think, hey, I see that person working out and better than themselves and that is pretty fantastic. And that's all we need to know about the spotlight effect is we all have our own personal spotlights. So much so that no one really cares what you're gonna be doing in any given situation because they think they're the most important thing anyway. And as I'm taking this down, I think I'd like to ask you if you haven't already, please hit that like button if you're enjoying the video so far. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. It would mean a great deal. Now let's talk about something that is more practical that you can do to get over your exercise insecurity. If you go online and type in, how do I get over insecurities? More often than not, it's gonna say to not compare yourself against others. And that is a fantastic tip. Don't compare yourself. But at the same time, it's kind of impossible not to compare yourself against someone. Me personally, I go out there and I'm running and I see someone that's like way fitter than me running right past me. I'm gonna compare myself and I might even try to speed up to catch up to them. But that's not a great thing. When you're getting to the gym, here's something that I did. When I was first getting to the gym, I would always compare myself against other people. And the bad part about it was, is I was comparing myself against someone that was much more fit than me. So when I was going out there and I was trying to lift the same amount of weight or run the same amount of distance or go the same pace, I just couldn't and that was very demoralizing. But something I did instead is I found the right group of people to compare myself against. And this might sound kind of strange as well, but I would try to find someone that I thought would be around the same level of fitness as me and I would compare myself against them because I found that just to be a little bit more motivating. And if you have a friend, I just didn't have any friends and well, that's just the way it was. I didn't have any friends that were around the same fitness level as me, so I couldn't take them to the gym with me. But if you have someone in your life that's around the same fitness level as you, 
work out with them, exercise with them, and use them as someone to compare yourself against and motivate you with. Don't compare yourself to people that have much more experience and that have been exercising much longer than you because that's just setting you up for failure. You are not at that point yet, but that does not mean that you won't get to that point. That is a great place to aspire to because we can all put in the work and get to wherever we want to be. It's just when you're first starting out, find the right group of people to compare yourself against. It's just, I think that is more realistic than saying don't compare yourself against people because, because inherently we're going to compare ourselves against people. That's just how the human brain works. So moving back into the realm of psychology, we're going to be talking about another psychological theory. This one's derived by Dr. Carol Dweck. I think that's how you pronounce it. And it's about the growth versus fixed mindset. And psychology plays a massive role in weight loss, much bigger than you might believe. But we're going to do a whole video on that as well. So this theory is about the growth versus fixed mindset. A fixed mindset is one that they think that everything is static. Their abilities, they can't grow from them because they were born with them and that's just the way it is. They can't do anything about it. On the flip side, a growth mindset is one that thinks that anything is achievable if they put in the work with consistency and they can achieve weight loss. They can achieve becoming an engineer. They can achieve becoming an astronaut if they put in the work and dedication. And I think that a lot of people that don't lose weight or struggle losing weight, I know that this was a true for me. When I struggled to lose weight, it was because I would think, oh, well, I guess I'm just always meant to be overweight because I've tried doing this and that and this and that and the other thing, but nothing seems to work. So I guess I'm just meant to be overweight. So what's the point of putting in the work when I'm just going to end up back here again? But if I had a growth mindset at those times, I would have said, oh, I didn't achieve my goal by doing this. What is something else I could do to make sure that I achieve my goal? So what can I do to strategize? And I honestly do believe that as I was learning to lose weight and becoming more and more successful with my weight loss, I developed a growth mindset. And that actually translated into many different areas of my life, to be quite honest. I used to have the mindset of, oh, I can't do this, so I'm just going to do this instead. And I would completely avoid doing anything I thought was challenging. Nowadays, I actually thrive and go for challenges. I seek out challenges. That's how much I love solving them and proving to myself that I can get over these challenges. And it's going to be the same for you. So what I want you to do is start developing a growth mindset and realizing that you can achieve literally anything if you put in the work and strategize to achieve that goal. Nothing is impossible. And I can promise you from my own experience, that is the case. So try to figure out strategies for you that you can develop a growth mindset. If this is something that you already have, then fantastic. But I know that a lot of people that struggle to lose weight, it might be because you have a fixed mindset where you think that it's just nothing is going to work. So there's no point in putting in the work, but I promise you, you can do it. And now for this last thing, it's going to be more practical once again. So this is going to sound very easy and somewhat obvious because a lot of people say it, but you have to show up often. You have to consistently go out to the gym. You have to consistently go to the park and go for a walk. You have to consistently do your exercises at home. You have to consistently show up. And what that is going to do is make it so your mind gets used to doing this. And the more and more frequently that you go and do it, the easier and easier it's going to get mentally because you're not going to be so insecure because you've already done that many, many times. And you're not going to feel so insecure of sweating because it's just what you do now. You go to the gym and you sweat and you go out there and you're out of breath and you go out there and people are laughing and watching, but they're not watching you. They're not laughing at you. They are just strictly laughing and watching, doing whatever they're doing. I don't know. What do people do at parks? Watch ducks and laugh at kids? Sure, that's probably what they're doing. They're not looking at you. I can promise you that. So show up consistently. Create a strategy that is going to work for you to be able to go out there pretty much every day. I would suggest actually going and doing something every day. It doesn't have to be long. It can be a two-minute walk. But just by getting in your car and going down to the park or going out your front door and going for a little walk, every day. It's going to get easier and easier until it's just become second nature. All right, folks, I hope those helped you. I know that these might seem kind of obvious in some sense, or they might have been something new that you haven't considered before. Any, in either case, I really hope they did help you. They did honestly make a massive difference in my overall weight loss journey and helped me become more confident when I was out there exercising. All right, thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. You are very much appreciated. If you haven't already, like I said, please hit that like button. It helps get this video to more people. 
And if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel because we're going to be talking more and more about this stuff. And I'll see you on the next one.